in this lesson, we'll identify and discuss the properties of various families within the periodic table. The zigzag line on the right side of the periodic table separates the metals from the non-metal elements. The elements to the left of the zigzag line are considered metals, except for hydrogen, which is a non-metal. All metals tend to be good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable, meaning they can be flattened into sheets without crumbling. Metals are ductile or can be drawn into wires. Most metals have high melting points and luster or shine. Metals at the bottom of a group tend to be more reactive than metals toward the top of the same group. Since metals are located to the left of the zigzag line, they tend to have one, two, or three valence electrons, making their outer shells less than half full. It's easier for these atoms to lose their outer electrons rather than struggle to gain enough electrons to make a complete outer shell of eight. Therefore, metals tend to lose electrons forming positive ions, which we call cations. If you need a refresher on the octet rule and the pattern of valence electrons, be sure to view my valence electrons in the periodic table video linked in the description below. The elements in group one, with the exception of hydrogen, are called alkali metals. Being in group one, they all have one valence electron. To obtain a stable octet, they could scavenge to gain seven more electrons to fill that outer shell, or they could just lose the one electron in their outer shell, which eliminates that outer ring, making the one below it the new outer ring, which already has eight electrons in it. It's easier to lose one electron rather than gain seven, so alkali metals will lose one electron. How does losing an electron affect the charge of an atom? Let's use sodium as an example. Its atomic number is 11, so it has 11 protons, which are positive. A neutral atom will also have 11 electrons, which are negative. An equal number of positives and negatives results in a neutral charge. When the sodium loses an electron, the positives and negatives will no longer be equal. It will have an excess of one positive particle, creating an ion with an overall positive one charge, or a plus one cation. Because it's quick and easy to lose one electron, this family is highly reactive. They must be stored under mineral oil or in a noble gas atmosphere to prevent accidental reaction with air or water. The most reactive of all the metals is francium. Like all alkali metals, it only needs to lose one electron, so it's able to complete that or react very quickly. Francium's one valence electron is in the seventh energy level, making it far from the nucleus and easier to lose than the valence electrons of other alkali metals. Let's examine that more closely. Here's a diagram representing an atom of lithium, an alkali metal in period two with two energy levels containing electrons. All the positive charge in the atom is concentrated in the nucleus, acting like a magnet, attracting and holding on to the electrons. The valence electron in the second ring is strongly attracted to the nucleus because it's relatively close to it, with very few electrons between it and the nucleus. Rather than draw all seven energy levels and 87 electrons of francium, I'll draw potassium, an atom with a few less energy levels. It's still an alkali metal. It has one valence electron, but that electron is way out in energy level four. Look at all the electrons in energy levels one, two, and three that interfere or shield the valence electron from the electrostatic pull of the nucleus. This makes it much easier for potassium's valence electron to leave the atom. Whereas lithium had very few electrons in the way shielding its valence electron from the nucleus, which helps the nucleus hang on to that valence electron more tightly. And it's more difficult for lithium to lose the one electron. This phenomenon is called shielding. It occurs when the inner shells interfere or weaken the nucleus's pull on the outer electrons, making them easier to remove. Francium's valence electron will experience more shielding being farther away in period seven, 
making its valence electron the easiest to remove of all the metals. That's why francium is the most reactive metal on the periodic table. Alkaline earth metals are in group two. Their electron configurations end in S2, giving them two valence electrons. It's easier for them to lose two electrons rather than scramble to pick up six more, so they tend to make cations with a positive two charge. They're very reactive, but react more slowly than alkali metals in group one. Transition metals make up groups three through 12, Ions of the transition elements create colors in solutions and gemstones. The red in rubies is due to trace amounts of chromium. Emerald's green color is caused by chromium and vanadium, while the purple in amethyst is from iron impurities. Transition elements are less reactive than elements in groups one and two, making them ideal choices for coinage, jewelry, and building materials. Nonmetals are on the right hand side of the zigzag line plus hydrogen. Nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They tend to be brittle and have low melting points. Many have melting points and boiling points so low they're already gases at room temperature. Nonmetals are dull rather than shiny and their outer energy levels are closer to being full than empty, so nonmetals tend to gain electrons to form negative ions called anions. One nonmetal family would be the halogens in group 17. The atoms in this family have seven valence electrons, so they tend to gain one electron. Fluorine has nine protons and nine electrons in a neutral atom. Once the fluorine gains an electron, it will have an excess of one negative particle, creating an ion with an overall negative charge. Since the halogens only need one more electron to achieve a stable octet, it's a highly reactive group. While the most reactive metal is at the bottom of the periodic table, the most reactive nonmetal is fluorine at the top. The elements at the top of the table have fewer occupied shells so their valence electrons experience less shielding, which makes it easier for the nucleus to pull in another electron. Since fluorine only has to gain one electron, and it's going into the second shell close to the nucleus, it's the most reactive of the halogens. The elements in group 18 are called noble gases. They tend to be inert or unreactive because they already have eight electrons in their outer shell. Helium is the exception. That atom is stable with a full first energy level containing only two electrons. Elements along the zigzag line tend to have some properties of both metals and nonmetals. For example, silicon pictured here has luster or shine like a metal, but its cracks indicate that it's brittle like a nonmetal. Since these elements don't fit neatly into the metal or nonmetal category, a new category called metalloids was created. Many of the metalloids are semiconductors, meaning they can conduct electricity, but only slightly. In a previous lesson, we began to memorize the pattern of valence electrons across the periodic table. Remember, the number of valence electrons determines whether the atom will gain or lose electrons, resulting in their ionic charge. These ionic charges also form a pattern across the periodic table. Earlier, we showed how the alkali metals lose one electron to acquire a positive one charge. Alkaline earth metals have a positive two charge after they lose their two valence electrons. Due to belated filling, the transition elements can obtain multiple charges and they don't really follow a pattern. So we're gonna skip over them today and look at their charges at a later date. The boron family loses three electrons, resulting in a positive three charge. The carbon family's valence shell is half filled with four electrons. It's a draw as neither gaining four electrons or losing four electrons has an advantage. So these atoms can do either, resulting in either a positive four or a negative four charge. Nitrogen with five valence electrons will gain three to make a negative three charge. Oxygen gains two electrons to become a negative two, 
We've already seen the halogens become a negative one. And since the noble gases won't gain or lose electrons, they'll have zero charge. It's important you memorize both these patterns because you'll need them once we begin bonding, formulating, and naming compounds.